Hi and welcome. We're going to take a look at the aria by Bach. It's from his Partita number no. 4 in DBWV 828, currently on the ABRSM Grade 5 syllabus. And this tutorial is made at the request of Suzanne. Thank you for asking. Now then, uh, we will walk steadily through it. We will talk about articulation, legato, staccato, what's going on, uh, ornamentation, and other things besides, I'm sure. Oh, fingering is another key thing. I find with Bach, these intricate contrapuntal lines, we need to know what finger's doing what, where otherwise we get tied up in knots and invariably run out of fingers. The tune for at the start. Very syncopated, isn't it? Especially from the outset. And we have an ornament right at the very beginning. Being Baroque music, the default position is it starts on the beat. So we'll start with the note before, exactly as it says in the ABRSM booklet. I quite like three and two because it's more comfortable. But you could do four and three. More tricky. Oh, it's quite awkward. Mm, I certainly prefer three and two myself. Let's go through steadily and see what else we encounter. So we've got to keep this line that smooth and these accompanying detached. I would practice it exaggerating that lift off of the hand because it'll make you create the separation. And here in this bar, and we'll see the same again in a moment, we need to hold on to something. And here it's that A there that we need to hold on to. So we've hit... That A is still there. And there... <laughs> all four notes which lead us into another ornament four and five I think it's gonna to have to be here quite tricky we're having to play things while one note is held down great exercise we happen to be in D don't we so let's hold that other fingers as well. Hmm. So we've just done our mordant and then we've got a passage where again holding that while so what's going on there? Hold that, I will practice this bit. Still hold that A down only at the very end do we let it go. And there's a melody over the top. So I'm playing the melody loud and just dabbing the chords. I've just made up a rhythm there, you could do anything. To separate the textures out. letting go and holding on to the right things there. And then here we're holding on to this A, aren't we? Tricky with the fourth and fifth there. Let's move on. Now I think this uh, line in the bass is best legato, not the staccato that might be more normal. idea of doing some staccato notes towards the end of the phrase really just to announce the phrase let me play that last line I'll keep it legato uh, ignore the dodgy fingering and now 
the staccato for that, just the last bit. For me, that just announces the fact we're coming to the end of a section. Second, uh, second section, longer, two-page bit. We start off with the same ornament that we already know. And again, I would do three, two. An option, but more tricky. Again, letting go of these while this is held. Practice it. Forget the ornament just to take that complication out of the out of the plot. Yeah, okay. Yep, you know what I'm doing. And now this left hand line, I have changed the fingering a bit. Let me just share with you what I'm doing. bit of that fingering before I tuck under with a thumb down to the fourth and then under which leads me through that phrase let me show you one more time let's put it in with the right hand dotted rhythm for these long semi-quaver passages often helps just drill it. <laughs> Playing that loud and that very quietly means I'm really focusing on what's going on down there. Um, let's go from the beginning of the line. It's a song, so a slight sense of dying away to end the phrase, I think. And it is how I'm phrasing this left hand. I quite like the those high notes that we're leaping up to and a great sense of that helps accentuate the sense that we're, we're heading upwards doesn't it um, I'm gonna slow the tempo down for this section now fingering here I quite like from our 25 that puts the thumb on the A which means that getting to the B is all the easier jump the second, the fifth there. Similar story here, which means getting to the A is easier. I'm going to keep going for a moment. Two, three, one, which makes getting to that note easier. Two, three, one. Sorry, that was wrong. Thumb on the E. And I would definitely drill that left hand. Do I know where I'm going? Staccato those, I think. Not staccato, but separate them. It's not an, It's not a that kind of staccato in Brock music. It's more with a gap, a bit of space between them. dotted rhythm just helps help me work out what's going on um, it makes it trickier um, and then hopefully when it comes to playing it smoothly absolutely solid on and they often fall on the beat don't they here again are they really secure 
Um, let's put the right hand with it now, nice and steadily. I like separating those two. first note of the bar just fractionally to help emphasize it um, you don't have to by any means but it's just a thought for you let me play it um, by doing that first of all ah oh, sorry ah yeah now I'll play them absolutely just slightly detached even lifts it somehow for me. Um, I played that bit enough. Let's carry on now, bar 37. Uh, go slowly. Make sure these are absolutely together. Scales in thirds. Can I do it? The tendency is, I think, for one hand to go at a slightly different speed than the other. I'm not quite well synced up. The other way around. <laughs> it doesn't quite work at the end there. Um, that's a good way of drilling this bit. Oh, what did my fingering do then? Yeah, so three and two on the beat. Ah, now this section here. Work out, work out what's happening on the left hand. I would do, yeah, two on. And then, and we're drawing dominant seventh chord, aren't we? That sounds the same as the one before, doesn't it? It's the same thing with the top note put down. Same, same chord. And I think I'd be inclined to do all those four bars with a detached feel. Um, I think Richard Goode does a uh, this. Legato staccato, legato staccato thing. Um, uh, have a think yourself what you'd like to do. Let's go steadily through this. Let's try it now staccato all the way. Thing that's very, very in keeping with the style. Let's try a uh, try both. Or just straight detached. Again, I shall leave it with you. And the final chords, uh, again, we're not trying to link them up in any way. So 
emphatic announcing the end of the piece, I think. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to play it through now really slowly, uh, but all the way through and I'll keep the chat to a minimum and I will just keep going. Maybe just the odd little <laughs> comment as we go. Something like this. Aria, I'm singing the melody in my head all the time. Sing it aloud if you want to. So I hope that walk through the piece has been useful. There's an awful lot in it, um, with the ornaments, the fingering, the articulations to think about. Um, I would suggest listening to other versions. I have listened on YouTube to two American pian uh, pianists, harpsichordists, that are freely available on YouTube. One is Richard Goode, and the other was Scott Ross on harpsichord. Um, they both play supremely well, but look at some of the diff the things that I've been talking about as well and listen with the score next to you. Um, it'll be an interesting exercise. Take care. Have fun learning this one. Bye-bye for now.